Okay, we're just going to get through these questions. Those are your learning objectives that are at the beginning of your chapter. <clears throat> um, I cannot see y'all. So um, if you have a question, write it down at, for, at the end, okay? Somebody unmute and say okay. 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 Thank you. All right. I can't see y'all, so I can't tell anything right now. All right. So we're talking about Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, and that is our HIPAA. HIPAA not only makes health insurance portable, but also protects privacy and security. An amendment to HIPAA established a set of codes for claims transmitted electronically. The idea of having patients' health information linked to their social security numbers imposed a high level of vulnerability to privacy intrusions and security threats. The HIPAA privacy rule was passed to shore up this weakness. So health Insurance Portability Accountability Act, HIPAA, Privacy Rule, Security Rule, and Portability of Insurance. So we're going to talk about what is privacy. The terms are commonly used in the medical office. Um, these terms are commonly used in a medical office. It's important to understand the definitions and usage. Ethics is a set of rules and standards of conduct that grow out of our shared understanding of right and wrong and govern our professional behavior. Laws, formal enforceable rules and policies based on community standards of conduct. Privacy, patient's freedom to determine when, how much, or under what circumstances his or her medical information may be disclosed. So we're going to talk about confidential versus anonymous. Excuse me. Confidentiality refers to how the recipient of the information handles information that a patient does not wish to be shared. Anonymity. Information cannot be linked back to the patient. For example, performing lab tests using an ID number instead of a patient name. Privacy rule. The HIPAA privacy rule establishes privacy standards for the use of disclosure and individuality, identifiable health information, and promotes patients' understanding of their privacy rights. Unlike other provisions of HIPAA, the HIPAA privacy rule applies to health information in any form, in conversation, on paper, or in electronic format. Disclosure documentation. The privacy rule, which took effect in 2003, specifies that each time personal health information is released for a purpose other than treatment, payment, or other healthcare operation, operations, the disclosure must be documented and a record of it maintained for six years. So you're gonna actually need to indicate the date of the disclosure, the name and the address if known of the entity or person who received the PHI, a description of the PHI disclosed, <clears throat> an explanation of the purpose of the disclosure or a copy of the patient's written authorization, a copy of a written request for a disclosure if any. Disclosure documentation, entities, providers are required to distribute the notice, notice of, I can't try that again, distribute notice of privacy practice, NPP, designate a privacy officer, provide authorization forms for release of PHI, implement policies to protect the PHI, develop procedures for correcting errors in the EHR, provide privacy training for the staff. Okay, we're going to talk about covered entities and business associates. Healthcare provider, health plan, health care clearing. <laughs> okay, what is a business associate? Business associates are entities that help to carry out the healthcare activities and operations of the medical office. The business associate may be a subcontractor who creates, receives, maintains, or transmits PHI on behalf of the covered entity. 
Do any of you guys, you can unmute to tell me this. Do you any, any of you guys remember that question on our EHR NCCT exam? Anybody? I believe I do. Okay. All right. What was the question? Do you guys remember it, uh, the question on our EHR NCCT review um, little test that we took? What a business associate is? Oh, yes. What are covered entities? Yes. So that's where that question came from. Gotcha. Okay. Minimum necessary standard. This is very, very, very important. When a covered entity makes an allowed disclosure, it should include only a minimum necessary amount of information to accomplish the purpose. So we're not sending everything. We're only sending what's absolutely necessary. How should a release that states all records follow a minimum necessary standard? I'm going to tell you. Different employees in the healthcare facility will have different levels of access to patient information. The physician will have access to the complete patient record, whereas the receptionist will have access to the patient demographic information, but very limited access to the clinical care information. How can the medical assistant know exactly which records to send in this kind of situation? Here's the answer. By a detailed review of the release of information form, on the release of information form, it's gonna tell you exactly what to send. You send, send no more than what's on the release form. Let's talk about consent. An authorization form is needed when information is to be disclosed for purposes other than treatment, payment, or operations. <clears throat> for example, for training or for quality assurance analysis. A general authorization is usually adequate, but a spe specific authorization is required for disclosure of information considered especially sensitive. For example, HIV testing. Individual choice principle. Patients should have a reasonable opportunity to make informed decisions about the collection, use, and disclosure of their PHI. For records to be released, an authorization form must be completed. And this is just telling us, this is on, um, oh, I don't know what page it's on. Oh, it's on page 47 in a green box. You guys pay close attention to the color of your boxes. The red, I mean, the, um, the green boxes are uh, components, oh, well, it's different different kinds of things. The yellow are uh, critical thinking questions, but your brown boxes is what you're doing in your simulation playground. So for example, today, if I said EHR exercise 3.4, that's in a brown box on page 46, but it's listed on Edmodo as EHR exercise 3.4. So just pay attention to your boxes because we have a lot of different colors with a lot of different things going on but always the brown are EHR exercises. Security rule. The HIPAA privacy rule governs the US and disclosure of PHI in all forms, whereas the HIPAA security rule outlines the administrative physical and technological measures that covered entities must take to implement and comply with the privacy rule. In a nutshell, the privacy rule is a statement of principles and the security rule is a plan for applying them. The HIPAA security rule gives each covered entity four broad goals to meet. Protect the integrity and confidentiality of electronic healthcare information created, received, maintained, or transmitted. Shield against anticipated security threats. Shelter PHI against unauthorized use and disclosure. Ensure that all employees comply with the provisions of the security rule. Security safeguards in the medical practice. Instead of laying out a rigid prescription for implementation, the security rule invites a range of approaches for complying with the standards. The security rule is designed to avert security breaches, 
provide contingency plans. Safeguards fall into three areas, administrative, physical, and technical. Administration, administrative safeguards require the medical practice or other covered entity to adopt formal processes to prevent, detect, contain, and correct security violations. Poor implementation specifications or risk analysis, risk management, sanction or penalty policy, and information system activity review. Physical safeguards. The practice must design a plan for the receipt, removal, backup storage, reuse, disposal, and accountability of electronic media such as EHR systems stored on magnetic tape or disc and memory cards. Essentially, the practice must know where this information has been, has been, who is with it, and what is it doing there. Okay, let me read that again. Essentially, the practice must know where its information has been, who it was with, and what it was doing there. To help practices meet physical security specifications, only physicians and staff members with an appropriate password are able to access the program information. So physical safeguards ensure security of electronic data, buildings, and equipment, and some sample methods are screensaver and login and password. Okay, so we're gonna talk about choosing a strong password. Um, passwords should be kept in a secure place if written down at all and should never be given to anyone else. Um, before I left my last job at ACS, we actually uh, had a program installed on our computers where we could uh, generate passwords that we liked, but I just wanted to give a couple of um, recommendations. Um, like Jordan, everybody knows you love Disney, so don't use Disneyland 2020 <laughs> or 2020. Um, but things like, uh, I know you guys have heard me use my uh, password, holy moly. Well, that's a saying that we used to say as a kid all the time, holy moly. Um, things like mgal5937, that's not a secure password. I use those passwords and stuff that I want you guys to be able to get into. But for my personal passwords, I always make sure that it's much more secure. Uh, getting into my uh, computer at Unitech, you wouldn't be able to do because my password is much more secure. Technical safeguards. A description of employees' access to the EHR should be listed in the Policies and Procedures Manual of the Medical Office. Technical safeguards are performed to protect and control access of technology, the controlled access employees, automatic log off, encryption, and decryption. Okay, you see this little chart with uh, assigning employee privileges? Mm -hmm. um, all that this is, is I'm just gonna give you, use ACS for example. My boss had this spreadsheet for every single person that worked in our department. It said, what systems we had access to, what doctors we were looking into it for. Like I was just cardiology, so mine was easy, but we had some ladies who did orthopedics, cancer, and maybe um, a general practitioner. So she would have her doctors listed, but this is just a list for the office manager in the off or whoever's in charge of running the office will know what you what you actually can get into and what you can't. So it just, it provides a security because only the doctor or the office manager should be able to get into everything. Designing audit procedures. Periodically, the security officer should examine each employee's access trail within the EHR. Systems link a person's username to reveal an electronic breadcrumb crumb trail required as part of security procedures. If you're not supposed to be there, don't go there. If you're found out, you're gonna be in trouble. They can figure out who's been where and why. So if a nurse asks you to log on somewhere where you're not supposed to be, you need to let her know, I'm sorry, I'm not allowed to go there. 
Is that like what you keep telling us about the um, hospital? Yes, that's exactly what I mean. Exactly. Okay, limited access policies for specific patients. Limiting employees access to a patient to patient information is only one way of increasing patient privacy. Uh, limited access policies for specific pa patients. Access to individual patient records can be designated. Patients can also control who has access to their healthcare information or their health information. Medical staff can document when a patient was given the notice of privacy practice forms. So we're gonna talk about patients' rights under HIPAA. In general, do you think patients know their rights? Y'all can unmute and give me an answer. No. I don't no. think they know the full extent. Yeah, right. I, they really don't know what their rights are. But if, rights. yeah, if you guys know what their rights are and you feel like what's going on is an infringe, it's infringing upon their rights, you can very kindly say, do you know that you have a right to? Or if you're asking them for something and they're unsure, you just give them both sides of it. But it's very, very important for you to understand what the HIPAA law is. Okay, patients write under HIPAA. View or receive copies if they sign a release form, have inaccurate information corrected, receive NPP, notice of privacy practice, opt out of sharing certain information, have certain information withheld from certain payers, receive lists of disclosures, and to file a complaint. So this is figure 3.4, it's on page 52. It's the Office of Civil Rights Complaint Process. If a patient feels that any of his or her providers have violated the provisions of HIPAA, he or she has the right to file a complaint with the Officer of Civil Rights, OCR, of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, DHHS. Y'all should remember those. <laughs> Other security initiatives, the Certification Commission for Health Information Technology, CCHIT, accelerates EHR certifications for EHRs for office-based ambulatory care providers and specialists, inpatient EHRs, health networks that exchange EHR data, EHRs within specific population, populations in a range of care settings. Meaningful use programs are discussed in more detail in chapter one, and we talked about meaningful use in chapter 21 and how important that was. High tech health information technology for economic and clinical health is a, is a uh, meaningful use program. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that here. High tech act, part of the American Recovery and Reinv Reinvestment Act of 2009, details incentive for the adoption of health information technology as a means for accelerating its meaningful implementation. Access to protected health information. This is who has access, financial institutions, insurance companies, and government agencies, consumer reporting, medical information bureau, employers, family, uh, these Sorry, I'm sorry. Employers, family and friends, internet communities, researchers, direct marketing firms, and prescription database. I don't believe all of those have access though. How can patients protect themselves? Review medical, dental, and prescription drug records for accuracy. Request a disclosure log. Request restrictions on disclosure of sensitive information. Ask to receive correspondence at alternative locations. Pay out of pocket. Opt for online versus paper statements and read them carefully. All right, let me stop our share here. There's everybody.
so how was that? Good, do we have any questions? Oh, there's Mia. You popped in, I didn't see you earlier. How are you? Hang on, I can't hear you. Why can't I unmute you, Tamia? Oh, there you go. Here we go. How are you? I'm good. Good, I'm glad to see you. Okay, does anybody have any questions? Yes, ma'am, Miss Lisa, let me unmute you. Go ahead. Okay, our, ex our exercise is the critical thinking. No, ma'am. No. No, ma'am. It's listed on Edmodo as EHR exercise 3.4. It's the brown boxes. 57, Miss Lisa, page 57. Okay, 57. Gotcha. Okay, I want to uh, really quickly, I want to talk about before we run out of time, I'm going to go over again because Tamia wasn't here and I'm not sure who wasn't here. Every day you have three assignments. You have your lesson. Today, this is our lesson, right? Then you have a lab and you have a homework. I need you submitting like today's lesson. Now, all you have to get on, as I know you're here, but I want if Miss Chrissy or Miss Angie or Miss Alicia or any of our higher ups pop on, they need to see that you were there. I want you to comment done. Okay. Lab, if I'm asking for a submission, if you cannot submit it to me over Edmodo and you're sending a picture, just send underneath comment, sent in picture. So they know how we're communicating together. They're trying to stay on their P's and Q's. They want to make sure that we're doing what we're supposed to be doing and, and they need to be doing that. And the third one's going to be, I said lab and homework. You have three submissions. If you're not, and I'm starting this today, so that's why I'm talking about it now and I need you to listen very carefully. Three submissions to, okay, I know I'm running out of time. Three submissions a day. That means there are 33.3 points a piece. If you miss a submission, that's a 66, 67. Gotcha. It only takes you to comment underneath. I've, we've been, I've been lenient because we've been trying to get this working. What's well, a new week and I really need for you guys to be more aware that you're submitting the correct assignments. If I resubmit something to you and you don't submit it back to me, it's a zero. Um, secondly, make sure that you're commenting under each. It's going to be three every day. You don't have to do it under the music video, okay? I send that because I'm hoping it makes you smile. <laughs> but on the three, the lesson, the lab, and the homework, I need something there, okay? Okay. Any questions before we run out of time? I What's think I got there? it. All right, I miss you guys. Okay, I do need to say there's no Zoom class tomorrow. But what I am going to do is I'm going to put a recording recording up with your answers to your uh, chapter three review. Okay, there's no reason for me to do this every day. Although I love you, I don't want to. <laughs> anyway, any more questions? Yes, you do that. want to see me. I, well, I we just say that right we see you anyway. every day. I just don't want to do this every day. <laughs> yeah, I understand that. All right, so if you guys need me, you know where I'm at. Have a wonderful day. Bye. 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 No Zoom, right, tomorrow? No Zoom. Right. Okay.